Suppose we have an enzyme E, which binds to substrate S, forming an enzyme substrate complex ES. The enzyme then catalyzes the substrate into the product, forming an enzyme product complex EP, which dissociates back to E and P. The product then goes to fulfill its purpose, while the enzyme can be recycled to catalyze other substrates. We want to quantify the rate of this reaction. More specifically, we want to derive a function of the initial rate of the reaction in terms of substrate concentration. To make our lives easier, we can make some reasonable simplifications and assumptions about the reaction. Firstly, since we are specifically looking for the initial rate of the reaction, it is implied that the reaction has just started. The concentration of the product as a result is negligible. Using this, we can reason that the reverse reaction P to S can be ignored, as well as that the product forming step is rate determining. Also, as the reaction scheme implies, the enzyme can only take in one substrate as opposed to multiple. Secondly, we assume steady state. The steady state assumption assumes that the rates of formation and breakdown of the enzyme substrate complex are the same. This equality is essential for our journey. Notice that for the breakdown of ES, it goes two ways. One is the simple dissociation of ES to E and S, the other being the rate determining reaction ES to E and P. Enzyme kinetics without the steady state assumption is called pre steady state kinetics. In this case, the quantification is more complex because the assumptions we made do not apply to pre steady state kinetics. We will leave that for now. Now we have our two important assumptions, let's start deriving the quantification. Let's first assign respective rate constants K1, K-1, and K2 to our reaction scheme. According to our first assumption that the second step of the reaction is rate determining, we can get the rate of the reaction. The question now becomes how to express ES concentration in terms of S concentration. We now turn to our second assumption. The rates of formation and breakdown of the enzyme substrate complex are the same. The rate of formation of ES is quite direct. The rate of breakdown of ES, on the other hand, consists of two rates of reactions, the dissociation of ES into E and S, and the reaction ES to E and P. By adding up the individual rates of these two reactions, we end up with the rate of ES breakdown. Since we already established that the two rates are equal, we can use this equality to single out ES concentration. However, we encounter another problem. Similar to ES concentration, the concentration of free enzymes cannot be easily obtained from experimental observations. On the other hand, the total concentration of the enzyme, E total, is easier to obtain. Since the total concentration of an enzyme is equal to the concentration of free enzymes and the concentration of occupied enzymes, we can express E concentration with E total concentration and ES concentration. After substituting the expression, we need to do some algebra. For the sake of simplicity, let's simplify this expression. Let's call it Km. Now, we have a nice expression of ES concentration. Let's substitute it back to the equation. Notice that this expression implies that 
every enzyme is used in the second reaction. In other words, the enzyme is completely saturated. This means that the enzyme is operating at maximum rate Vmax. We finally arrive at the end of our derivation journey. This equation we just derived is called the Michaelis-Menten equation. It was originally discovered by Leonor Michaelis and Maud Menten. Michaelis also contributed to research regarding enzyme inhibition, pH, and quinones, while Menten invented the azo coupling reaction and other contributions in histochemistry. More in the description. So, what does this function look like? By plotting it using modern software, we end up with a graph that expresses hyperbolic properties. At low concentrations of substrates, a change in substrate concentration roughly corresponds to a linear change in initial rates. This can be explained by letting the concentration of substrate far smaller than Km, making the S concentration in the denominator insignificant compared to Km. In this case, the function becomes linear. This also explains why increasing Km causes the graph to stretch to the right. By increasing Km, the slope decreases as Km is the denominator. However, as substrate concentration increases, the initial rate converges to the y asymptote. This can be explained by letting S concentration far larger than Km, making Km in the denominator insignificant compared to S concentration. In this case, the function simply becomes a constant. This also explains why increasing Vmax causes the graph to stretch upwards. By increasing Vmax, the y asymptote increases as well. Another interesting mathematical property about the MM equation is that when V0 is equal to exactly half of Vmax, Km is numerically equal to S concentration. We can arrive at this conclusion by some simple algebra. While the Michaelis-Menten equation and its corresponding graph can already provide us with much information regarding our enzyme, in experiments where raw data is inputted and plotted onto the graph, the graph's hyperbolic properties can make calculations of Km and Vmax possibly inaccurate, especially when done by hand. In this situation, it would be more convenient and appropriate for us to find a graph with linear properties that also preserves the information from the MM equation. In this case, we take the reciprocal on both sides. In this double reciprocal equation, we are expressing 1 over V0 in terms of 1 over S concentration. As a result, we end up with a linear function where Km over Vmax is the slope and 1 over Vmax is the y-intercept. The x-intercept of this function is negative 1 over Km. This graph is called the lineweaver burke plot. Using the plot, an increase in Km leads to the x-intercept going closer to the origin. An increase in Vmax will also make the y-intercept closer to the origin. One of the advantages of using the LB plot is that it is easier to identify and calculate Km and Vmax especially in a closed note exam. For computer programs, it's also easier to implement a linear regression model rather than approximate a hyperbolic curve. However, as a double reciprocal graph, the LB plot tends to give undue weight to data obtained at low substrate concentrations and can distort errors in the extrapolated values of Km and Vmax. At this point, you're probably wondering, what is Km? We've only defined it as a means to simplify our expression and make it cleaner earlier in this video. This term is actually called the Michaelis constant. At first glance, it seems that all the ES breakdown rate constants are located on the numerator, while the ES formation rate constant is located on the denominator. We might think that it is related to some form of catalytic efficiency of the enzyme or the enzyme's substrate affinity. Unfortunately, neither of those speculations is completely accurate. For reactions that have K-1 far larger than K2, 
the interpretation that Km implies substrate affinity stands, because K2 becomes insignificant compared to K-1, thus simplifying the expression to Km equals K-1 over K1. However, in most enzymes, K-1, K2, and K1 are comparable and cannot become insignificant when compared to each other. As a result, Km is a complicated function of all three rate constants and can only roughly imply the rate of ES breakdown compared to formation, with a higher value corresponding to more breakdown compared to formation. Remember, ES breakdown goes two ways, the dissociation of the substrate and the dissociation of the product. For catalytic efficiency, we need to make some modifications to the MM equation. First, we rewrite Vmax as K2 times E total concentration, as established during the derivation. Then, we assume S concentration is far smaller than Km, such that S concentration is insignificant compared to Km in the denominator. Thus, this leaves us with this expression. The parameter K2 over Km is called the specificity constant which represents the catalytic efficiency of the enzyme. Neither K2 nor Km can individually represent catalytic efficiency. Two enzymes can have the same K2, yet the rate-enhancing catalytic power of the enzymes can differ greatly. Experimentally, the Km for an enzyme tends to be numerically similar to the cellular concentration of its substrate. Because of this correlation with cellular concentration, Km alone also cannot sufficiently represent catalytic efficiency. Different types of inhibition can significantly impact enzyme kinetics. We will cover four types of reversible inhibition. We won't be discussing allosteric inhibition because it deviates from typical Michaelis-Menten behavior. Let's go through each case one by one. Competitive inhibition occurs when the inhibitor binds to the active site of the enzyme, blocking the substrate from accessing the active site. The reaction scheme then becomes this. The competitive inhibitor modifies the MM equation to look like this. Notice that there is a new constant alpha in front of Km. Alpha is defined as 1 plus I concentration over Ki with I concentration being the concentration of the inhibitor, and Ki being the association constant of the inhibitor to the enzyme. An increase in inhibitor concentration corresponds to an increase in alpha. For our convenience, let's also define a parent Km as alpha Km. As we increase alpha, which increases the apparent Km, the MM graph stretches to the right, which lines up with our observation that the apparent Km has increased. The increase in the apparent Km can be qualitatively explained by Le Chatelier's principle. Since inhibitors occupy free enzymes, it pushes the reaction E plus S to ES backwards, promoting the breakdown of ES. Since the Michaelis constant is a rough measure of the rate of ES breakdown compared to formation, the apparent Km should indeed increase. However, looking at the LB plot, Vmax did not change. Intuitively, this is because if the substrate concentration far exceeds inhibitor concentration, the substrates will outcompete the inhibitors, occupying all free enzymes. Mathematically, we can simply take the limit as S concentration approaches infinity. Uncompetitive inhibition occurs when the inhibitor binds to the ES complex, which causes a conformational change such that the catalysis is blocked. The reaction scheme then becomes this. The uncompetitive inhibitor modifies the MM equation to look like this where alpha prime is defined as 1 plus I concentration over Ki prime, with Ki prime being the association constant of the inhibitor to the enzyme substrate complex. In this form, we cannot obtain much meaningful information. Let's make some adjustments to this equation. 
In this form, as we increase alpha, the apparent Vmax decreases. The apparent Km decreases as well. This lines up pretty well with our graphs. The decrease in apparent Km can be explained qualitatively by Le Chatelier's principle. As the inhibitor binds to the ES complex, it pushes the reaction E plus S to ES forward, promoting ES formation. Since ES formation is promoted compared to breakdown, the apparent Km decreases. Unlike competitive inhibition, uncompetitive inhibition actually decreases Vmax, because the inhibitor binds to the ES complex rather than the enzyme active site. This difference in binding sites makes substrate impossible to outcompete inhibitors. The only factors that can influence Vmax is the concentration of the inhibitor and its association constant with the ES complex. Mathematically, it checks out. If we take the limit of S concentration to infinity, we get V0 equals Vmax over alpha, prime. Mixed inhibition, as the name suggests, contains both competitive and uncompetitive inhibition. The reaction scheme then becomes this. Mixed inhibition modifies the MM equation to look like this. It is simply a combination of the MM equation for competitive and uncompetitive inhibition. Using a similar adjustment method we used for uncompetitive inhibition, we realized that as we increase the concentrations of inhibitors, both competitive and uncompetitive ones, apparent Vmax will decrease. Apparent Km, on the other hand, depends on the values of alpha and alpha prime. If alpha is larger than alpha prime, apparent Km will increase. If alpha is less than alpha prime, apparent Km will decrease. If alpha is equal to alpha prime, apparent Km will stay the same. In fact, when alpha is equal to alpha prime, we call this special type of mixed inhibition non-competitive inhibition, because the inhibitors do not contribute to a change in Km.